We are joined by Martin Trix, junior driver of the number 19 Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota and Joe Gibbs, owner of Joe Gibbs Racing. Before we open up to questions, I'm going to turn it over to you, Martin. Okay. <laughs> uh, not what I expected. Um, I was about the most nervous I've ever been coming in here. But uh, obviously, if you've, uh, I guess the news has been on the internet all week, so you guys already know. I don't even know why I'm here, but. Uh, uh, no, honestly, here, just to uh, let you all know that I will not be back full-time next year, but i um, excited about the rest of the year, obviously, and it means the world to me to see uh, Johnny Morris here. He's been, uh, you know, a huge supporter of mine, and, um, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do, you know, any of the things I've been able to do without him being behind me 21 years, so um, it's, been, it's been incredible. It's been a hell of a ride. I'm, uh, I'm excited about the future and not really sure what that looks like yet, but... Uh, feel good about you know my decision and I uh, just want to thank coach and everybody at JGR Toyota they've been uh, absolutely amazing to uh, you know to be able to win a championship is something I always dreamed of and to be able to get that done was uh, was amazing and um, just feel really lucky to be surrounded by a lot of great people over the years so to all the guys I've worked with crew members crew chiefs team owners um, you know you name it across the board it's been uh, it's been a true honor and uh, I'll miss all those people for sure, but I won't be gone. I'll be around still, and uh, we're going to do some stuff together, um, have some fun, and enjoy life a little bit and wind down. Awesome, and Coach, I'll turn it over to you too. Well, obviously, everybody has such great respect for Martin, and I did everything I could to keep, to keep it going. <laughs> I think we got two 43-year-olds that are at the top of the game right now, but uh, just – when you think about this guy, he's won 34 races, 32 of them in a Toyota, which is great. He even won a, a start researching it. He won a truck race in a Toyota, so that was awesome. Um, he's got the 32 wins and, of course, um, two Xfinity championships. He won those back to back. Um, 2017 Cup championship. And so through all of those, it's been just absolutely great working with him. I think everybody knows Martin's reputation, a real gentleman, great competitor, and it's obviously something that's going to be a big deal for us and a big loss. So we talked about Johnny. I can tell you that Johnny uh, cares about a lot of, lot of things. Family first, but then he cares about America and our country. And that's reflected on our race cars from time to time. You can see it. He cares about America. I think the other thing that Johnny cares about is veterans and all those that have sacrificed for our country. And I love the fact that we get to fly those colors lots of times and honor the veterans so that we know that that's a huge deal for him and it's a huge deal for us too and then the outdoors there's one thing about it uh, normally when I try and find Martin he's someplace with Johnny <laughs> and so <laughs> I've kind of got used to that but they love the outdoors and that's a big deal too for us now to tell you a little story on that two years ago if you remember, we're at Martinsville and the 19 cars fighting to get in the playoffs. And so, yeah, <laughs> I, and we did it. Somehow we did it. So we get in the playoffs. I'm there. I get a phone call from Johnny. And so I said, Johnny, we made it. And he said, yeah, I know. And he's talking to me and he's whispering the whole time. And so I went, Johnny, why are you whispering? He goes, I'm in a deer blind. <laughs> And then, of course, he tortures me. He sends me pictures of streams and lakes and everything. I'll be working on the weekend, and Johnny is someplace outdoors enjoying everything. So uh, just had a great time with Johnny. Uh, obviously, Auto Owners 2 has been a big part of Martin. As a matter of fact, I think he was today uh, earlier. Uh, a lot of their agents across the country. And when you see that big A coming at you, you know it was auto owners, and that's been a big deal, um, uh, sponsoring Martin and us. And, of course, that's been terrific for us. 
Um, we also have racers. Mark is a racer himself and selling all their products and delis and groceries all across the country. We really appreciate them and all they've done for our team. We always mention Interstate because they're uh, our founding sponsor and that's a huge deal for us. And of course, Toyota. I don't think any of us would be here if it, if it wasn't for Toyota. Now there's some good news in all this. Uh, the great thing is Martin is gonna continue with us. He's gonna be an ambassador for us work on different projects and different things. We haven't talked about all of it yet, but I think there'll be a lot. And if you noticed when he originally teed everything up, he said, I won't be racing full time. So we might be able to talk him into a few things there too. His teammates are all here, the drivers. They're in the background there. You got Denny, Christopher and Ty. So they're here to kind of celebrate this time. And of course, James and the whole 19 team, they're working hard. They're probably someplace, but that's a huge deal for him too. Um, so for all of us, I think that what we're really excited about is Martin continuing with us in the future. So I'm sure I'm probably gonna have to find him someplace in a boat or with Johnny in a tree blind someplace but we're gonna run him down and so we're excited about the future and I've talked a little too much, but it's all important to us and all those people that I just mentioned is a big deal for all of us. So we're gonna continue our relationship going forward. We're excited about that. Just gonna oh, interrupt yes, you first. I just wanted to come here to talk to you out of doing what you said. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to come here for a family. I'm talking about JP, Kelly, but the whole Bass Pro family. 21 years, and I just remember Martin as the first time we ever had opportunity to really be on the hood of a car, especially for a season. And Dale Jr. picked out Martin. It was Chance Two Motorsports, Dale and Kelly, and they picked this guy, Martin Truex. I met him in a tent in Atlanta. And you can have dreams in life. We all have dreams. Sometimes they come true, a lot of times they don't. It's a dream come true for everybody in our company, Martin, and you mean to have, if you want to dream about a big fish or to be a champion racing. One thing I just tell everybody, what you know, like when you align with somebody, your whole, it's like our whole family. All these 21 years, not one time can I ever think when you did anything to not make us, not just disappoint us, but not to make us fully proud of you, buddy, every way. And with our customers too, your love of the outdoors, going to conservation events all the time, and then too, just the excitement of every race, having a chance to win or be up front. Coach, I know you've done everything to keep this guy. And Martin, he's, I, no regrets, buddy. Just, just be happy and know you make all of us so happy, so proud. And I just wanted to come here, not just for me, but everybody in the Bass Pro family, Tracker family, our dealers, everybody just to say thank you very much and congratulations on a heck of a that's heck awesome. of a run buddy that's awesome that's great that's <laughs> you too coach thank you thank, guys thank very you much. man we yeah you bet All right. i did have a conversation with martin i told him you do realize every guy in america that's your age wants to do what you're doing <laughs> race cars make a ton of money i know that for a fact <laughs> And, and have all the fun. So anyway. All right. Thank you guys. We're open it up to questions from the media. Raise your hand, we'll get a wireless mic. We'll start here in the front row with Bob and go across and then we'll go to Lee. Bob Hawkers, Fox Sports. Martin, why now? Uh, it just felt like, you know, felt like the right time for me, honestly. I, I you know, thought about it a lot um, in the past few seasons and just waited for, waited for that you know feeling in my mind to be positive like this is okay I'm good I'm, I'm good I, I want to do something else and um, yeah just you know something just felt different this year for me and um, you know I felt like it was time to slow down and do something else it's been a great ride though obviously 
Um, no, I mean, I don't really, it doesn't. Um, yeah, I mean, we've had, you know, some disappointments this year for sure, but I mean, it's not enough to, <laughs> it's not enough to make you stop doing what you want to do. So, um, yeah, totally uh, not related to performance in any way, shape, or form. And then Lee. Um, before you had all your successes 13 years ago, you were asked about what you want your retirement story to say about you. You said that I was a good competitor, I was a good driver, and I didn't leave anything on the table. At the end of the day, as long as I'm happy with what I've done, that's the biggest thing. But just to have the respect of your peers and competitors is, impor is important. So now that you are where you are today, do, is that how you feel? Yeah. Yeah. I, 100%. I've, um, I would say I've achieved more than I ever thought I would. Um, you know, that being said, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, heartbreakers. There's a lot of, you know, things you go back and think about like, man, if that had turned out different, but you know, uh, a championship, three runner ups in the, in this format. I mean, that's, I feel like really good. Um, I, I'm proud of what I've done. Um, I feel like I gave it everything I had and I feel like I was really, really good at what I did. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with that. I, I'm content. I feel good. I, I'm happy. I'm, uh, I feel good about this. Yeah. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Uh, Martin, when did you finally come up with this decision? Has this been recently, or have you been sitting on this for a while? Uh, it, I mean, I, I've known for a few weeks, obviously. We've known for a few weeks. Um, I was leaning that way most of the season. I was leaning that direction, but I wasn't totally sure. So it just took a while to think about it all. And it's a big decision. It's a lot. It affects a, not just me. It affects a lot of people. And, um, you know, again, that's the toughest part. You don't want to let people down. You know, I've been, you know, 21 years I've done this. I've never missed a race. I've never missed a practice. I've never been late for anything. I've, I've never missed an appearance. I mean, you, you live your life by a schedule that somebody makes for you. And it's just time for me to make my own schedule. <laughs> it's really as simple as this. that's really what it boils down for, you know, to me is is I want to go do the things I want to do, and I don't want anyone to tell me when I can and when I can't do those things. And I still love racing. I'm still going to race some. I don't know what, when, how, why. I don't know any of that yet. I'm going to figure that out. But uh, I feel very fortunate to be in this position, be able to make this decision on my own terms. It's something that was always something that I wanted to be able to do you know because there was times in my career where I didn't know if I was going to have a job next year or in you know six months or whatever so uh, it's just a good a good feeling to be able to make your own uh, make your own way do the things you want to do and um, you know that's kind of what led me to it led me to this what was it like to tell Joe or to officially tell the organization because obviously you know we've known you've gone back and forth the last couple of years and thought about this but when you finally tell somebody, tell the organization, it's, there's no going back from that. So mm -hmm. you talk about being nervous in here today, you know, but what was that like informing the team and make, getting to that, making that decision that day? Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't, Coach and I have talked about it a lot recently, and so it wasn't that hard. He's been amazing through all this, you know, just being on my side and, you know, wanting me to do what I want to do. Um, it is tough. It's tough to let people feel like you're letting people down, but you know, at the same time, I feel like uh, I've got great relationship with with everyone on our team, all of our guys uh, on the 19, especially. And uh, but Coach has been awesome. You know, helped me work through it. And his li he would always make me a list of pros and cons, and his his list of pros was always <laughs> longer than mine. <laughs> I think the last time I had nine but, pluses and two minuses. Yeah, but uh, no, honestly, it was it really wasn't that hard because I'm very comfortable with with him and, and the guys. Okay, we'll go Jordan, Lee, and then Kelly, and then Nate. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Um, you've talked over the years as you've kind of gone over this decision about wanting to be competitive and having fun. Obviously, you're still competitive. The numbers bear that out. Are you not having as much fun as you once did? Um, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. I don't, you know, it, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to explain. I have my reasons. I have, you know, like I said, I, I feel really good about this, and uh, this is what I want to do. So, yeah. And then, Joe, the natural question is: is you're going to need a driver for that team next year? What are you looking for in a driver? Yeah, we're gonna we're still working on all that, and so we just want to focus 
right now on Martin and all that stuff will take place later on. So we're thrilled to kind of be here and support him. All of our guys are here. Martin means a lot to us. So he used to sit in those competition meetings and he would sit in there and a couple of our drivers would be, and, and I would look over at Martin, he would go. <laughs> Martin didn't say a lot, but he, when he said it, uh, it meant a lot to us. Gunna Lee, Lee Spencer, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio and Catchments.com. I'm curious, you know, you grew up as a second generation racer and when you followed your father's footsteps, could you have thought back then that you know, you would be a cup champion one day, that you would have all these wins, you would win at, you know, several home tracks of yours. I mean, just all the things that your dad maybe didn't get to do that you did. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I never thought of that. You know, when I was, um, you know, running the, up in the North Series in, in my dad's cars, I was honestly moving to North Carolina and racing cars for a living was never on my radar. It just it wasn't it was on my dad's radar i guess because he was talking to people and whatnot but i was just working on cars building race cars and and trying to go fast and win races and that all kind of played out so thinking back to all those memories just uh it's it's amazing to uh you know talking to johnny talking about you know the memories we've shared together and the, and the you know great wins we've had over the years i never dreamed of any of this just uh very 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 lucky we're going to go to Kelly, Nate, and then Zach. KellyCrandallRacer.com. Martin, what or why were you the most nervous coming into coming in here today? I don't know. I mean, I just, I'm just i never usually nervous when I come in here, and this is kind of a big deal. So <laughs> I guess that's why I didn't really know what I was going to say or what I was going to get asked. <laughs> um, I'm sure, you know, a lot of people are going to have their opinions, and that's, that's part of it. But, um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's a big deal, I guess. Do you anticipate the, the second half of this year, now that this is out there, you know what you're doing, it's done and over with, um, do you anticipate the second half of this season feeling any different? Or are you looking at the second half any different going forward now? I mean, I'm not going to approach it any differently. Um, I, I don't expect my team to either. I, I don't think they will. I think it's business as usual as far as, you know, when we're at the track. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess it'll feel different, like, you know, knowing that I'll be going to tracks for the last time or whatever, you know, in a cup car now. So um, I'm not sure what, what it's going to be like, but I'm going to try to enjoy it. We're going to go to Nate, Zach, and then Caleb. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC, NBC Sports. Uh, Martin, you said that um, you just want to slow down and do something else, and you said you want, want it to be so that people aren't telling you the things you um, – that you can't do the things you want to do. So – What's the something else? Like, what, what, what are the other things that you want to do? Have you thought about that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's as simple as just not having a crazy schedule where, you know, 40 weekends I'm at a racetrack. So that's part of it, you know. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing yet, aside from the fun stuff I like to do away from the racetrack. But what, uh, What's that, like just fishing? Or? Yeah, hunting, fishing, hanging out with friends. Like, I've, everyone in my family that's ever gotten married, I miss their wedding. You know what I mean? Like it's, you don't have a life. You're, you're married to racing. It's all you do. Monday till Sunday, that's all you do. So um, it's just gonna be interesting to lead kind of a normal life for a little while and see what that's like. It's been, you know, I haven't, I've never done that. Are you worried at all about, you know, you hear when drivers retire, they miss the competitive juices, the passion? He's Are got you? Xfinity cars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, I'm bored. I want to go race. Let's go. So you'll yeah, still be able to We're working on that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one for you, Joe. Uh, you're known as a persuasive individual, I think, and you've been down this road, I think, with Martin the last couple of years. Martin said that he felt like this was the right year. Did you feel that? Did you feel like you weren't going to be able to talk him out of it this time? Well, it was always up to Martin. And, you know, we, we talked other years. Martin, I think, thought about things. And I think it was just different this year. And I could kind of tell when I called him to get the, the final result, he was totally relaxed. And so I could read that in him. And so, yeah, we're, just, we're excited about going forward. I think now he's going to have a lot of opportunities, and some of them with us. And so I think, I think as much as anything, he'll be setting his own schedule and 
kind of doing whatever he wants to do. Zach Sterniolo, NASCAR.com. Martin, you were in contention to win at Sonoma last week. Uh, knowing that you've known this for a few weeks now, obviously there's been no loss in that competitive edge. How do you go forward from here, kind of balancing remaining on top of your game, but also either cherishing or relishing the moments to come here, knowing that, like you said, that there are these are going to be some of your last visits um, to race there in a cup car? Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to do do my job and do you know what I've what I've always done. I don't, I don't, you know, again, I don't think anything changes here. I'm, you know, I, I'm here to win this weekend and I'm going to do, you know, the best job I can do. So, um, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't really overthink all these things. I just, you know, make a decision, do my thing, go out and race and try to enjoy it and, and do a good job for the team. So, uh, yeah, I'm, we've got a great team, great cars, and, and we can win some races. That's the goal. Caleb uh, Vessel, Speedway Digest.com. Martin. When the uh, checker flag flies in Phoenix, what do you feel like after this 19-year career? What do you feel like you'll miss the most? Uh, probably just the people, you know, just hanging out with the guys and you know, going to dinner, talking about the race car, and or talking about the race on the way home from the, uh, you know, on the way home in the plane or something like that. It's always fun. Do we have any final questions for? We'll go back up to Bob and then to Philip. Bob, Bob Parker, Fox Sports. I have two. Martin, are, is this an emotional day for you or? Is it just another? I'm not of really that emotional, but uh, I'm so I'm not sure. It hasn't really sunk in yet, honestly. I'm just I don't really know. Looking forward to getting in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and since you've left the door open to racing again, uh, the one thing maybe you haven't done in everything is win Daytona 500. Do you envision yourself trying to make another attempt at that? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'd be open to it. Yeah. Um, Martin Philip Jones from the Des Moines Register. Um, for our readers who may not be as familiar with racing as, as we all are, you know, can you talk a little about how hard it is to maintain focus for 40 weeks a year, and if that wears on you, and if you know, and if you're excited to just take a step back? Yeah, I mean, it can. I, I think it just depends on you know who you are, your personality, your team, whatever, how things are going. Certainly you know, years where you have a good team and fast race cars are always easier to, to navigate than a, a tough season, um, you know, or you're in a place where your team's not up, you know, where it needs to be or your cars aren't where they need to be, which, you know, I think you're in the sport long enough. We all get in those situations. Those are really, really difficult to kind of keep, you know, to, to keep pushing forward and know that there's, you know, where's that light at the end of the tunnel? And I've certainly had, you know, my share of those seasons. But, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a tough sport. Um, it's a long season. It's a grind, and and you got to be fully committed. Uh, I think everybody here knows that. So, um, I've put a lot of uh, more than half my life into this, and I've gotten a lot out of it. So I'm I'm proud of that. Can we have a follow up here with Zach and then Dustin? You're in contention for your second straight regular season championship. There's it wouldn't be a surprise to uh, most of us in here if you went out and won the title on your way out here. Does that, with as well as the, as strong as the performance of this team is, did that make the decision any harder um, to decide that this is going to be it regardless of what happens here from now till November? No, I think it'd be great to go out on top. We'll wrap up with Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. What, what was so strong that kept you back the previous seasons that was not as strong of a feeling this time? Because you, I, I get the sense that maybe I'm wrong, but that you've come close to being to have done this years earlier, and there was something that brought you back, but it wasn't as strong this time. What, what was that, and what was not that pulling you back this time? I, yeah, I don't know. I just. I, I didn't feel the same. I, I felt like I had more to accomplish, and I would accomplish more. And um, <laughs> I, I really haven't overthought it, honestly. Um, this just felt like the right thing to do for now. We'll see. Did, did you consult any other former drivers or? I, I mean, I have in the past. Yeah, over the past couple of years, just getting you know people's opinions on or or really their mindset on what was their 
you know, what, what did it for them, which way, you know, what's, what steered them each direction. Uh, and I took all that into account when I thought about it. Um, but yeah, just thought about it a lot and um, too much probably, but uh, yeah, finally came, you know, finally just, it just feels right right now. It just feels like I, I, I'm doing what I, I feel like is the right thing for me. Simple as that.